What's up, all you studious scholars? It's Mr. Harrison here from school. I'm going to walk you through the slideshow for physical and chemical properties and then also physical and chemical changes. So let's get going. First thing is that a property is basically just a description. It is the tree is green, the tree is tall. If the tree gets struck by lightning, it will start on fire. Um, any sort of description of the tree is a property of that tree. You've got two types of properties. The first type is a physical property. And they're determined by the use of the five senses. Smelling, touching, tasting, hearing, and seeing. And they are, a they, they are again a description of an object that's based on your five senses. Chemical properties are the second type. And they are determined by a substance's ability to react with other substances. So it's, it's, it's listed or described in terms of its reactability with other things. For example, physical properties are things like the color of an object, the smell of an object, the taste of an object, the hardness of an object, the state of matter the object is in. So um, also things going along with state of matter like the boiling point, the freezing point, the melting point of that substance. A few more examples, density, which is how tightly packed the particles are in the object. Mass, which you measure with the triple beam balance. Volume, which you measure with a graduated cylinder. Temperature, which you measure with a thermometer. And the malleability, which is the ability to be molded. So if you can bend it and mold it, that's, that means it's malleable. And lastly, the solubility, which is how easily it's dissolved. All right, second type, chemical properties involve the ability to react with air, which includes rusting, like iron rusts, tarnish, silver tarnishes, corroding, and simply rotting. If you leave like a vegetable outside, it'll rot. So that's all reacting with air, rusting, tarnishing, corroding, rotting. Then the ability to react with water or acids so that can be the solubility, excuse me, not the solubility, but the, but the reactability with water, and then also reacting with acids. And then lastly, the ability to catch fire. That's called flammability. All right, so pop quiz. Statement is, it's the ability of gunpowder and fire to explode. Is that physical or chemical? you guess chemical, you are right, because that is flammability or combustibility. The color of the sunset, physical or chemical? If you guess physical, you got it. The ability of a nail to rust. If you guess chemical, you got that one, because it's reacting with air. The shape of a leaf. Physical or chemical? If you guess physical, you got that one. The ability of wood to burn, physical or chemical? If you guess chemical, you're right on that one. That's flammability, chemical property. The hardness of a diamond, physical or chemical? If you guess physical, you're right on that one. The volume of your Coca-Cola. That would be physical. The mass of two camels. That would also be physical. So if you're um, looking at the connections between the different answers, Basically, what you're seeing is if you can describe that property without changing the identity of the substance or what it is, then it's probably physical. But if you can't describe it without changing what you have, it's probably chemical. For instance, the flammability, you can't, you can't have flammability without changing something into the ash version of itself, which is not the same thing. So speaking of that, we're going to move on to physical changes. We just talked about physical properties. Now we're on to physical changes. A 
Physical change is a change that occurs without changing the identity of a substance. And there is no new substance formed in a physical change. So it does not change what you have. For example, changes in size, shape, or color. Color can be a tricky one, so hold on to that idea for a while. Um, sharpening a pencil and getting pencil shavings. It's still bits of pencil. It's not a new substance. Tearing paper, crushing ice. It's still paper and ice. It's just in tinier chunks. Sugar dissolved in water. If you've ever tried to, to drink sugar dissolved in water, you'll notice it tastes like sugar and water. It's still the same thing. It's just dissolved. And then painting a wall, that's a perfect example of a change in color that is physical. It's still paint and a wall. Now, chemical changes are changes that occur, that cause, that do cause or, or cause this, the uh, identity of a substance to change. So in essence, something new is formed that wasn't there before. So it causes the identity to change and something new is formed. So you've got new substances with new properties that weren't there before. So you've got some things that are combining together, but you end up with a completely new thing with new properties. All right, here's some evidence of a chemical change. First one, a new color appears. If you had two clear liquids together and something pink or red or purple or any other color appears, evidence of a chemical change. If you're not boiling something, you just mix some things together and bubbles happen or fizzing happens, that is a chemical change. If a precipitate forms, which is a solid that usually sinks to the bottom, that's good evidence of a chemical change. If you mix two liquids together and a physical or a, a solid comes out of those two liquids and precipitates to the bottom, good evidence of a chemical change. If you mix two things together without adding heat and heat is produced, definitely chemical change. If light is produced, like fire, chemical change. If sound is given off, explosion, definitely chemical. And these uh, chemical changes, what they all have in common is they're difficult or impossible to reverse. Like you can't just undo the change. All right, another example here is reactions with acid. So um, vinegar and baking soda will release a gas called carbon dioxide. And there's many, many more examples of different chemicals that you can mix together that will release a gas or get hotter or explode or other things like that. Reactions with oxygen, like oxidation, which is the fancy science nerdy word for rust. So you've got oxygen and and iron, and that creates rust, which is the, sci the scientific uh, term for rust is iron oxide. It's not the same thing as iron. Reactions with electricity, such as silver plating. Reactions between substances, so you mix sodium and chloride together and you get table salt. You mix silver and the sulfur in the air together and you get tarnish. So this is nice shiny sulfur. This bluish, brownish kind of colored stuff is not sulfur. It's a, it's a compound called tarnish that involves the silver and the sulfur making something new. Other examples of chemical changes are things like wood burning or anything burning for that matter. Uh, metal rusting, food digesting. That's kind of one people don't think of a lot of the times because if you think about it, you can't undigest your food and make it back into what it was before. Then you've got gasoline burning. So wood burning, gasoline burning, anything burning is going to be chemical. A cake baking. That's a weird one because if you think about a cake baking, um, it seems like it might be a phase change, which would be a physical change because you're going from a liquid to a solid, which is called freezing. Think about liquid water turning into ice, liquid turning into a solid, that's freezing. But the catch is the cake actually would turn from a liquid to a solid when you add heat to it. That's actually backwards, right? If you add heat to a liquid, it's not supposed to turn into a solid. It's supposed to turn into a gas. And then things like phase changes like this one, water evaporating from the ocean, ice melting, all physical changes. So I gave you one free answer there. 
when when water evaporates, that is a physical change because the way I remember it is I accentuate the the pH sound. So phase changes are physical changes. Evaporation is a phase change. All right, physical or chemical. The yolk of an egg, which contains sulfur, causes tarnish to form on silver. Physical or chemical. This one actually is chemical because tarnish is a different substance from the silver. Physical or chemical change. The ice on a lake melts to become water in the lake. Physical or chemical. Question is, is it still water when it's when it's ice and when it's liquid water? The answer is yes, it's still water. Therefore, it is a physical change. Physical or chemical. Charcoal in a fire turns to ash after several hours. Think about this. Is it still charcoal or is it something different? Secondly, is it something you can reverse? Can you take the ash and turn it back into charcoal? The answer to both of those is that, it, no, you can't turn it back into charcoal because it is something different. So that is, uh, sorry, that, that would make it a chemical change because it's something different. You can't change it back. A pencil is sharpened in a pencil sharpener, sharpener leaving behind shavings. Well, it's still little bits of pencil, right? It's not something new. Therefore, this is a physical change. A bicycle rusts when left in the rain. Is it still iron or is it something new? The answer is it is something new. It is reacting with the oxygen in the air. Therefore, it is a chemical change. It's something new. Plus, you can't turn the rust back into iron, at least not easily. A shirt is accidentally torn on the washing machine. Question is, is it still a shirt or something different? It's still a shirt, therefore it's a physical change. A log is split in two by an ax. Ask yourself, is it still a log? The answer is yes, just in smaller pieces. So therefore that is a physical change.